This anime combines several genres, such as Sky, overpowered character and game world. It talks about a corporation slave guy called Suzuki Ikaru as a programmer in the company. One day when he crawls under his desk for some much-needed shut-eye, he awakes to find himself in his game world. There, he becomes overpowered and is capable of beating around. Besides that, he uses another name, Satu. Suzuki Ikaru is a 29 years old guy working as a game programmer. On Sunday, he is at the train station. Apparently, his train arrives earlier than he expected. He quickens his pace to catch up with the train. He then realizes it is Sunday, thus the train arrives earlier than usual. As a game programmer, he is used to working overtime on holidays. Thus, he remains single and has no life other than work. Suzuki arrives at the office. He sits down at his desk, opens his files, and starts coding. Suddenly, his workmate approaches him and informs him that their game project War World is considered too difficult by their client. They afraid the beginner cannot enjoy playing the game. He is asked to lower the difficulty level of the game. Suzuki refuses because it may not meet their market target. Suzuki offers rewards for the players who can accomplish the mission empty-handed. Therefore, pro players will enjoy the game and the beginner players will not have too much hardship. His mate agrees with his offer. Suzuki asks him to confirm with the client related with the idea. He doesn't want to alter ongoing mechanism. Lunch break. Suzuki wanders around and sees a lost child and approaches her. Fortunately, her mother arrives in no time and thanks him. After lunch break, he returns to his office and continue his work. He stays up late to finish his work. After finish with his coding, he tries the game. It is called Freedom Fantasy. In the middle of the trial, his workmate bids goodbye to go home. He has been in the office for three days, and his wife will nag around if he doesn't come home. Suzuki is envy seeing his care. He is asked to get a girlfriend, but with his working cycle he doesn't have time to look for one. Finished with the trial, he continues with other projects. He works non-stop until morning. The next morning, he continues his work. He has been busy with his work for three days. One afternoon, he has finished with all his works, but his workmate informs him there is a bug in inventory. Suzuki wonders because he has fixed it. But it turns out that he was doing the freedom fantasy, while his workmate refers to the War World game. Thus, he has perforce to fix it. It is night time when he finishes it. Some of his friends have already gone home. Some are sleeping in the office. Suzuki decides to take a rest. He is lying under his desk and shut his eyes. He wakes up to find himself no longer at the office, but in an arid land. He looks around and realizes his surroundings resemble to the FFL game world. He believes this world is a combination of War World and FFL games. He looks at the interface through his vision. He tries to push several buttons but they don't work. When he thinks to access the button, it displays the menu he wants. Then he realizes that he needs to use his mind to access the navigation menu. He checks his profile and finds his name is Sadu. It is the same avatar name when he tried the game. When checks the map, it turns out he is on the Dragon's Valley. Unfortunately, there are elite troops coming nearby in the valley. Suzuki hides himself behind the cliff because it is not possible for him who is only level 1 to fight them. The Lizardman elite troops arrives at the place where Suzuki hides at, and one of them shoots an arrow and cuts his skin. Suzuki feels pain on his skin. The Lizardman troop launches hundreds of shoot to him. He runs and hides behind rocks while trying to attack with a meteor shower. However, his attempt gives no result even though he has pushed the button several times. When he thinks he is about to die from their attack, suddenly several meteors fall upon the Lizardman elite troop. The powerful explosions occur several times, while Suzuki is hiding behind the rocks. Due to his attack, his XP is drastically increased. Suzuki or Sadu succeeds to survive the Lizardmen's attack and manages to slaughter them. After the meteor shower has stopped, Sadu tries to get up. Unfortunately, there is a Lizardman who isn't hit by the meteor because he is quite close to Sadu's position. He throws a sword to Sadu and asks Sadu to fight him. Sadu collects the sword and fights him. During the fight, he sees that the opponent's healing points are running out. He then throws his sword onto the Lizardman and finishes him off. Sadu catches his breath after destroying the Lizardman. He tries to log out but no avail, nor he is able to save the progress. When he checks his profile, he finds his level and skill have increased. It turns out fighting the Lizardman and issuing meteor showers level up his progress. Moreover, his wound is also healed instantly. He has reached maximal skill. He tries to issue the meteor shower again and he is surprised to see the meteors create a huge explosion and damage his surroundings. He runs to escape from the meteor, then he turns off the meteor button. Afterwards, Sadu checks his inventory. He is surprised to see loot items in his inventory after destroying the lizardmen. 
he buys a water skin and drinks from it all he wants because the water will not dry up. He looks at the inventory again and finds that he has a lot of money. He spends a little and changes. He makes a fire and takes a rest. While enjoying his time, he tries to read the mechanism of the game. It turns out to obtain a new skill he doesn't have to level up but makes a few actions. He decides to call it a night after discovering many things. The next morning, he heads to Warrior's Fortress. It takes a full day and night to reach there. The next day he arrives at the Warrior's Fortress. He looks the map and finds he is near with the kingdom in Saru City. There are hundreds of soldiers on the way. The highest level is 31, while the average level is 7. When he checks his surroundings, suddenly a wyvern, a dragon-like creature, appears and attacks him. He falls after being lunged by the wyvern. Strangely, he doesn't feel any pain. Because the wyvern is about to attack him again, he throws a pebble towards it, and it goes away. Unfortunately, it flies towards the city, and Sadu hurries up heading there. Unfortunately, Sadu arrives a little late because Wyvern has arrived and terrifies the soldiers. The battle between the Wyvern and the soldiers is happening. Unfortunately, the soldiers are not quite strong to deal with it. One of them named Xena jumps forwards to set on the Wyvern. However, the Wyvern launches its attack and sends her tumbling down. Sadu jumps high and seizes her. He lands on a dry branch of a tree. Xena awakes and Sadu warns her not to look down. Neglecting his word, Xena looks downwards and is scared. Sadu carries her and jumps on the rocks. They land safely and get to know each other. It turns out Xena is a mage soldier who is on duty in Saru City. A moment later, Xena's friend, Lilio and Ayana arrive. They are suspicious with Sadu, but Xena explains Sadu has saved her life. Ayana asks Sadu about his identity. Sadu tells them he is an escaped merchant and his goods are lost during the meteor shower. Luckily it sounds makes sense for them to believe it. Afterwards, they are heading to the city on a cart. On their way, Sadu sees the soldiers have defeated the wyvern and peeling of its skin. Arriving at the city, Ayana takes him to the residence registration. When checking Sadu's identity, it looks like it was before he levels up. In the document, it appears he is still considered level 1. After paying for the residency visa, Sadu parts ways with Ayana, Xena, and Lilio. Ayana has advised him to stay at Gaiden which is located near the entrance gate. He decides to go there, but on the way he is invited by a girl named Martha to stay at her inn. They finally go to the inn and there he meets her mother. Entering the inn, Sadu books a room and also orders food for him. Afterwards, Martha's mother asks Martha to clean up the room. After Martha leaves, her mother tells him that yesterday there was a meteor shower in the Dragon's Valley. People assumed it was the Demon Lord. Sadu is surprised because there is a Demon Lord in this fantasy world. But according to Martha's mother, the Demon Lord had been defeated by the hero decades ago. After telling about the Demon Lord and the Wyvern, Martha's mother leaves. Sadu tastes his food, and a moment later, Martha arrives. Sadu asks her where he can get the daily needs. She informs him the place and excitedly takes him around the city. And off they go around the city. On the way, they see two little demi-humans bumping into a young man. Getting annoyed, the man scolds them. Sadu comes and stops that man. Then Sadu helps tidy up their firewood. They thank him and go away to meet their mother. Martha is surprised to see him who was kind to demi-humans. It turns out demi-humans are hated because back then, they killed many farmers. Afterwards, they go around the market. Sadu is bargaining with a merchant and succeeds to get a great price. He buys Martha a hair clip that makes her happy. They continue walking around and Martha shows him a dragon mask that is used to wear on the festival. The merchant shows them a wig that can be used at the festival to be the princess. Because of the merchant's words, Sadu buys both useless items. On the way home, Sadu sees a girl named Arisa getting on a cart horse. They stare at each other for a few moments until she disappears. They return to the inn. There, Sadu meets a little girl, Yuni, who works at the inn. Sadu goes to his room and eats his meals, and takes a rest. When he is going to sleep, he thinks about this fantasy world. Everything there is too real as a dream. After further investigation, it turns out that the world is much different from World War or FFL. He tries to access the menu but he doesn't get anything. Being restless, he goes out wandering into the city at night. He thinks if he can beat the game maybe he can come back. However, he just remembered that the game cannot be finished. Thus, his focus now is to explore the world further. The next morning, Martha wakes him up and tells him his girlfriend is waiting downstairs. Sadu wonders as whom she means. When he gets down, turns out it is Xena. She is off-duty and intends to invite him to explore the city. They walk around the city. Xena buys two croquettes but Sadu pays them. Xena says she wants to pay back the favor for saving her life yesterday. 
However, Sadu doesn't mind about that, and they sit at the park while eating the croquettes. They continue buying other food and try many kinds of food in the city. Sadu is curious with the fried dragon wings which turn out to be bat's wings seasoned with soy sauce. When they are about to eat, accidentally a little kid nudges Xena so that the seasoning dirty her blouse. It is then that a mage appears and offers magical laundry service. They go to an alley and proceed the cleanup procedure. In a short time, Xena's blouse is as clean as before. Afterwards, they continue walking. Sadu asks how she recites the magic spell. Xena explains him several theories about magic that confusing him. It turns out she has been educated to use magic since childhood. Even though the education is difficult but she is happy because magic is very helpful. She even wants to fly and Sadu replies it must be exciting if she can go on a date flying. She is embarrassed and tells him to wait until she can fly. After taking a walk in the market, they go to the fort. From up there Sadu can see a windmill in the heart of the city. Xena explains it is wheat mill, or it can be used as shelter from Wyvern's attack. Xena invites him to go there. On the way, they pass by a temple. Xena invites Sadu to drop by at the temple. Inside the temple there is a picture of a hero who is fighting the demon lord. The hero uses a holy sword that glows blue. It is said that only hero can emit blue light from the holy sword. If it is not a hero the sword will not glow blue. However, if the sword acknowledges the wielder, then the holy sword will glow blue. Suddenly a priestess the shrine maiden named Orma appears and says that using the holy sword is not enough to defeat the demon lord. Moreover, she explains that only a hero who is summoned by the young lady, Parian, who can defeat the demon lord. Xena introduces Orma to Sadu. She is the priestess at the temple who worships the goddess Parian. Orma is the daughter of a noble family who is taken care of by Xena's mother. In the middle of their conversation, suddenly Orma is called to heal someone, and they part ways. Sadu and Xena meet the owner of the cart horse. While Xena is bargaining with the owner, Sadu checks his title. He is surprised to find he gets many titles, such as the God Slayer and other titles. He realizes his meteor shower can be used to destroy the god. Being overpowered, he decides not to do anything conspicuous there and they finally go by the cart horse. On the way, Xena explains about the anti-dragon towers that have been installed with cannons. The cannons will be automatically released if there is a dragon comes to attack. One of the towers seems to ruin because there was a small dragon that crashed into the tower. In the past, there was also a huge dragon who managed to break through the tower wall. Sadu asks whether the hero came that time. Xena replies that hero will be summoned if only the demon lord attacks. With a particular ritual, the hero will appear and defeat the demon lord. Moreover, she explains that every generation will be attacked by different demon lords. There are those who can control beasts, there are also who can control the demon race. Soon they arrive at a certain place. There is a crowd of citizens who listens to priest Zakuin's words. The priest says that demi-humans are demon. Thus, killing them will surely be rewarded. In the middle of the crowd, there are three chained demi-humans. Priest Zakuin starts stoning them. Xena jumps from the carriage and protects them. She even gets scolded by the priest for protecting the demons. Meanwhile, Sadu is stunned to see Xena's action. Not wanting to stay silent, Sadu begins to scan everyone. He finds several people who provoke the citizens and arrests them one by one. Meanwhile, a priest from Galarin Temple comes and supports Xena. He says Priest Zekuin can be arrested for violating royal rules regarding torturing demi-humans. On the other hand, Sadu succeeds knocking out the provocateurs and at the same time seizes the leader. He takes the leader in front of everyone and tells them that he is the real trouble. His name is Urz and he lends his demi-human slaves to Priest Zekuin and sells the stones that are said to be sacred and incites many people. Suddenly Urz gets up and a demonic figure pierces his chest. Seeing that, everyone runs away. Sadu approaches the demi-humans and asks them to escape. However, their master, Urz, had ordered them to stay. If they disobey his words, the chain around their neck will tighten. Sadu checks their status and sees they don't have a master any longer because Urz had killed. Xena and some soldiers arrive to defeat the demon. Sadu tries to stop them but it's too late. A circle magic is already created and they are transported to the demon nest. Sadu is with the three demi-humans. They should be able to get out of the dungeon labyrinth. Sadu gets to know with them. It turns out they don't have a proper name. Thus, he names them Pachai, Tama, and Lisa. After he gives them clean clothes and salve to their wounds, they thank him for being kind to them. Sadu checks the maps and discover where to go so they can get out of the dungeon. He also discovers where Xena and the soldiers are. Furthermore, the demon is nowhere to be seen. Later, he checks the demi-humans before him. Among them, Lisa is the only one who has fighting skill. Therefore, he gives her a sword. 
After that, they go through the labyrinth. He asks Tama and Pachai to use their hearing and smell skills. They must tell him when they find anything suspicious. Meanwhile, Lisa has to watch the rear. After walking for some time, Sadu is informed there is a suspicious scent ahead. They creep and look inside the room. It turns out there is a monster who is eating a human. Sadu doesn't know what to do, but Lisa suggests they better sneak behind it while it is eating his prey. However, Sadu makes a move and shoots the monster to death with a magical weapon. He asks Lisa and others to keep it secret regarding the weapon. Afterwards, Sadu makes a spear from its skin. Meanwhile, Lisa collects a pearl which turns out the core of the monster. Lisa explains its core can be exchanged for goods in the store. Afterward, Sadu breaks the chain around them and gives them weapons. He asks Lisa teach Pachai and Tama collecting core from the upcoming monsters. They walk along the labyrinth and deal with monsters. Along the way, the level of the demi-humans increases a bit. Being tired of walking they take a rest and eat the food that Sadu brings, and sleep. After that, they continue their journey. Sadu asks Pachai and Tama take turn throw the monster with the stone so that the monster turns its head and Sadu finishes it off. They have overcome all the obstacles and no one is injured at all. Besides, they also find a room filled with unique potions. Afterwards, they fight the caterpillar, rats, and frog monsters. The demi-humans even manage to defeat the frog monsters without Sadu's help at all. Lisa asks permission to cook the frog meat, and Sadu allows it, and they taste the roasted frog together. Their level has increased little by little, and they set off to continue their journey. In a certain room, they encounter a slime monster. Sadu attacks it with magic flame, but it doesn't work for a level 10 slime monster. Lisa says in facing with slime, they must aim for its core, and off she goes finishing the monster all alone. A moment later, danger arises there. A level 40 beast is approaching and ready to attack them. The monster tries to pounce on Sadu. While holding back the monster, he scans the surrounding walls. He finds there is a trap room behind the wall. He throws the monster against the wall leaving it broken. After finishing the monster, they continue their journey again. They arrive at a room full of cobwebs. There are some rolls of webs filled with humans. Sadu asks Lisa, Tama, and Pachai to free the humans who are entangled there. The two of them are rich people. They will give them a reward once they getting out of the labyrinth. Meanwhile, Pachai is being scolded by the man whom she wants to help. He is unwilling to be rescued by a demi-human. Sadu calls Pachai, and when the man sees Sadu, he screams for help. However, Sadu is reluctant to help him and tells him to free himself. The man keeps screaming leaving one man named Jim Bolton annoyed and threatens will burn him if he keeps screaming. Afterwards, they walk through the labyrinth together. Before them, there is the sound of fighting. Sadu tells Jim and others that he and the demi-humans will be going into the battle. They step forward and see many slime monsters attacking the soldiers. Sadu and the three demi-humans begin to move. The man before arrogantly tries to fight the monster but ends up terrified when the monster launches attack on him. Fortunately, Tama and Pachai come finishing the monster off. Sadu beats the monster and releases Xena who is apparently held by the monster. Xena meets the demi-humans. They thank her for helping them at the square. After defeating the slime monsters, they try to figure out the way out of the dungeon. Sadu feels something is odd with a part of the walls. He checks on the map and sees there is a hidden door behind it. The door is connected to the room where he threw the monster previously. At the same time, one of the soldiers finds a treasure chest. When they open the chest, it turns out the demon which sent them to the dungeon comes out of the chest. A duel ensued, but unfortunately, Sadu cannot take part the fight because it will be conspicuous. Unfortunately, the demon is quite strong to hold back the soldiers. Sadu finally steps in. Suddenly, the level 40 monster falls before them. Sadu jumps to the next room and takes out the holy sword and slays the monster to death. He puts on the dragon mask and the wig he bought before. With his appearance, he can fight without being afraid of being discovered. He goes back upstairs and chases the demon. Before dying, the demon narrates the summoning ritual of the highest race demon. A magic circle appears and a terrible demon appears. The demon eats the lowly demon that summoned it. After that, the demon begins the massacre but Sadu manages to rescue the people. He takes out the holy sword and is ready to defeat the giant demon. Unfortunately, the holy sword cannot be used to its full potential. Sadu switches to use the magical gun but the attacks aren't strong enough to harm the demon. Thus, he switches to use another magic weapon. He takes out a fireball that hit the demon with a great power. Even so, the demon is still able to survive. Sadu runs forward while releasing fire attacks numerous times. In order to defeat the demon, he must use the holy sword. However, the holy sword can only perform its full potential if it is wielded by someone with the title hero. 
Sadu hasn't acquired the title, but he realizes he can use his other title. He takes out the sword utilizing the title God Slayer. He slays the giant demon to death. The next afternoon everyone has returned. Sadu reunite with the three demi-humans. The arrogant man from before is also there. Despite the prestige, he finally thanks them for saving his life. Xena arrives and hugs Sadu. She is happy because he is safe from the incident. After that Sadu and the three demi-humans go to Slave Trader. They are now officially become Sadu's slaves. Sadu is offered two more unsold slaves. They are Lulu and Erisa. Sadu is surprised realizing Erisa. He is even more surprised finding she can say his name easily. Because she can say his name, he is suspicious of her. He whispers something to Lulu, and she doesn't respond. Meanwhile, when he whispers something to Erisa, she screams out loud while touching his hair. Turns out Erisa understands the Japanese language, and finally Sadu buys both of them. He takes them and introduces them to the demi-humans. Fortunately, neither Erisa nor Lulu hates demi-human. On the contrary, Erisa gets along well with Pachai and Tama. Afterwards, they walk around the city. Sadu wants to ask her about her Japanese language but there are still other around them. Then Sadu invites them to have a meal. Pachai and Tama want meat for their food. Lisa says she will eat anything he chooses, but she prefers chicken if she can choose. Erisa and Lulu say they used to eat tasteless food. Thus, Sadu takes them to a restaurant to have a feast. The slaves are happy and eat the food until they are full. Sadu excuses himself to go shopping. He buys clothes for them and chicken skewers for Lisa because she is craving for chicken. On the way, he sees other demi-humans who are hungry on a narrow path, and he gives them the food. Sadu has returned to the restaurant and asks them to wear the clothes he had bought. After that, he invites them to the inn. Martha welcomes him and has prepared the room. Sadu says he is helped by the slaves to get out of the labyrinth. He wants to book one more room for the slave, but the inn has already fully booked. Everyone in the dining room look at them. Sadu asks Martha to take the kids to his room, while he and others will set a tent. Erisa quickly assures the customers to stop looking at them that way. She asks the innkeeper if she has a storage room for them to sleep. Martha's mother replies the storage room is full but she has a stable. Sadu takes the demi-humans to the stable. He covers the barn with a blanket so they don't feel itchy. He explains if anyone comes to them they must be against them but not kill them. Instead, they can scream and he promises he will come. Afterwards, he walks back to his room with Lulu and Erisa. When he wants to pull out his clothes, Lulu offers to help, but he refuses it. Sadu asks them to change. When he is done changing his clothes, he is turned to see the girls naked. Turns out the slaves are obliged to serve their master at night. Sadu refuses them and explains he doesn't need it. Lulu is crying to hear that. He puts on a blanket to cover them and asks them to sleep. Sadu is asleep, but he is awakened and surprised to see Erisa on top of her. Sadu seems to waver by her presence, but he tries to remain conscious. He hugs her and whispers and forbids her to use her skill spell on him. Because it is an order, she cannot disobey him. He realizes she has used physical magic two times. One of them is when she is speaking in front of the consumer. She has just used three magic skills at one time to him. Sadu questions her motives and orders her to tell the truth. She confesses that she only wants to make him happy. Turns out she falls in love with him from the first sight, and she is sad to find he refuses the service. Thus, she decides to sneak into his bed at night and activates her spell. She introduces herself as Takabana Erisa. She was Japanese like him before she died and reincarnated to this world with full memory of her past life. Erisa asks him if he also reincarnated to this world. However, looking from Sadu's appearance that doesn't change she believes he must not be reincarnated. Instead, she believes Sadu has summoned to this world as a hero. Sadu is stunned to hear that. Moreover, Erisa says Sadu is the second Japanese person she met. Sadu thinks Lulu is also from Japan, but Erisa says she doesn't come from Japan, but her father did. After remembering what happened and remembering that he changed to his teenage look, Sadu thinks he is neither reincarnated nor summoned. Erisa asks if he met the god when he arrived at this world. He replies he is alone when he gets to this world. Moreover, Erisa asks if he sees a magic circle but he didn't see it. She asks if he came with many points and high level, which he replies the contrary. But he then remembers he has already acquired meteor shower skill when he got there. Confused with all of this he decides to sleep. The next morning, Xena comes and sees him sleeping with Erisa and Lulu. She is stunned and runs away from there. When he thinks it clearly, Sadu grabs his clothes and jumps out of the window and chases her. Sadu explains what happened but she doesn't believe it. Lilio tells her that a man buys slaves so that he can enjoy the night. Sadu says he doesn't want it. Furthermore, he says he bought slaves to that someone would help him with his daily affairs. Finally Xena believes him. 
he invites her to go to a shop and buys her a scarf. After buying the scarf, they return to the inn. Arisa approaches them pretentiously. Sadu mocks her for being completely ignorant. He asks her to call others. When she leaves, he remembers their conversation before going to sleep that night. She says she was born as a princess of a kingdom. With her knowledge of the past, she helps the kingdom achieve great prosperity. But somehow her strategy failed and made the kingdom slump. Another kingdom came and made invasion. The king and the prince were executed, while the princesses were imprisoned. One day, the demon lord appears and burned the kingdom. Erisa and Lulu escaped from death and met the slave trader. Lisa, Tama, Pachai, and Erisa meet Sadu. Lulu is not coming because she is not feeling well. Sadu gives them money and asks them to buy daily needs. Erisa asks permission to use magic just in case they need it. Sadu thinks about it and gives her permission. Erisa and the company leave happily. Zena comments the slaves are happy and act casually. Sadu says he doesn't treat them like a slave so their characters get better. Sadu invites Zena to find a house. They meet the housing agency and there are three houses available. They go to take a look. The first house looks good, but the former owner had been assassinated. They decide to go to the next house. The second house suits them but there is a brothel in front of it. Afraid it gives negative impact to the slave Sadu passes this one too. The third house has a criminal base underground. They haven't got the ideal house and return to the agency. Natty, the agent says she will look for another house this afternoon. Afterwards, Sadu and others watch the opera. Finish watching. Sadu asks Lisa to buy meat for everyone. Lisa is excited and off she goes with Pachai and Tama. On the way, Sadu and Zena meet Ayana and other soldiers. Turns out they have fought Fang Ants. Some of them escape to the city. At that time, Pachai and Tama arrives carrying the giant ant. Sadu senses there will be an onslaught of the ant monsters coming to the city. He asks Lisa and others to get the weapons and stand guards. As predicted, thousands of Fang Ants fly towards the city. Fortunately, most of them are blocked by the magic shield. But not a few also manage to get into the city. The battle ensues in the city. Pachai and Tama beat the monsters which are about to attack the inn. Unfortunately, there is a monster that gets into Natty's workplace. Sadu immediately go there and beats the monster. However, there is a poison liquid on the stairs trapping Natty below. Fortunately, the manager who is an elf comes and raises her with his magic. Natty introduces her boss to Sadu. After that, Sadu returns to the square and sees that the ant armies have been defeated. At night, Sadu wanders around the city. In an alley, he sees monsters attacking. He fights the monsters and defeats them. He walks closer to the alley, and there he sees injured people. He hurries up taking them to Natty and her manager's house. Inside, he meets Natty and her boss. He says the boss must know one of the injured people. The boss checks them and one of them turns out is an elf named Mia. She is not badly injured, but the ratman who protects her is seriously injured. Natty goes out to find medicine, and Sadu chases her. The next morning, Sadu goes to Natty's house. She tells him Mia is not seriously injured. Instead, she is in pain due to losing her MP in great numbers. Meanwhile, the Ratman has passed the critical state. Sadu meets Mia and they get along well with each other. Sadu returns to the inn and tells Arisa and others he found a princess who is guarded by the Ratman. The kids are excited to meet the princess and off they go to pay Mia a visit. The kids are extremely happy seeing her. When Sadu is about to leave, Mia grabs his clothes. The next morning, Sadu buys a horse carriage to load the goods so that he is not suspected. Lulu who used to carry a horse carriage teaches Sadu how to ride it. Lulu is extremely silent and shy, but when he asks about Arisa, she talks non-stop about her. On the way, Sadu sees an owl watching him closely, leaving him feels uneasy. They return and see Mia who now is playing with the kids. That time, Sadu sees an owl earlier and is now watching him again. Sadu gets into the Ratman's room. His name is Mize. In the room, Yuza, the boss is also there. From Mize, Sadu finally knows the chronology of Mia's attack. It turns out Mia is the princess of the elf village. She was kidnapped by a mage for some reasons. Mia ran away and met Mize. Mize then took her to Yuza's place. Unfortunately the mage also chased them there. It turns out the ant monsters earlier were also summoned by the mage. Sadu feels Yuza knows why Mia was kidnapped, but somehow he doesn't want to tell it. Afterward, the kids are screaming from below. Sadu and Yuza hurry to go there. It turns out they are screaming because of the lighting. But at that time, Sadu sees the owl inside the room. In an instant, the owl transforms into other figure. Yuza steps forward to attack him. However, he uses physical magic making everyone collapse. Only Erisa and Sadu can survive from his magic. Sadu scans him and figures out he is called Zen. They fight quite long. 
but Zen turns out to be a shadow magic user and very troublesome. Zen takes Mia with him and leaves. If Sadu wants to rescue her, he must go to Cradle. He jumps towards the portal Zen created before it closes. He is thrown into the shadow prison. With his skills he can break free from the prison. Sadu gets to where Zen is. Zen is surprised because Sadu can get there. Zen says only heroes can come to Cradle. He is teleported out of Cradle. Sadu faces with a giant tree. He enters the tree and meets the plant spirit, Dryad. With her help, Sadu can go up to the top floor. There, he must fight the humans made by the alchemist. He also has to fight the stone golem but he manages to defeat them easily. After that he goes to hear Dryad is. But she has dried up and is unable to move. Sadu pours water and she comes back to life. With her help, Sadu manages to climb to a higher floor again. There, he fights a bunch of insects monsters. After defeating them all, Sadu arrives at where Zen and Mia are. Zen is surprised that Sadu can get there so fast. Zen summons his followers and they all gang up on Sadu. Meanwhile, Zen takes Mia away from there. Sadu fights the artificial human girls and a bunch of stone humans. After all, he manages to beat them all. When they chase one of the girls, the girl begs him to fulfill her master's wish. Sadu goes to meet Zen. After acknowledging Sadu's prowess, he gives him a magic sword. Sadu asks him his purpose. It turns out that Zen wants to die. Once, his family was massacred by people from the enemy kingdom. Zen who is the king of undead resurrected all those who have died becoming undead. They then massacred the enemy kingdom until nothing was left. Since then, he has been looking for a hero who can kill him. He wants to reunite with his dead wife. Because of that, Zen wants Sadu to kill him. Sadu puts all his might and beats Zen to death. Zen's wedding ring falls as his body melts. Sadu picks up the ring and meets Mia who is still unconscious. Unfortunately Cradle starts the self-destruction process. Sadu wakes up Mia. Luckily she knows the mechanism of Cradle. She cannot stop the self-destruction but she knows how to teleport out of the Cradle. Sadu brings Mia to the previous room, collects the fainted girls, and takes them all. Mia then teleports with the girls. Meanwhile, Sadu goes downstairs where there is still a girl lying unconscious. He takes the girl away and meets Dryad. Loosely Dryad is able to transport them out of Cradle. Unfortunately the tsunami waves hit from behind. With fire magic, Sadu turns the nearly crashing waves into steam. He keeps doing it while carrying the girl's body. <laughs> After running fast, Sadu finally manages to survive the disaster. Sadu meets Erisa and others nearby. After the girl's master died, they make Sadu their new master. Sadu gives Zen's wedding ring to the girl, and she intends to deliver it to Zen's wife too. One of the artificial girls will stay with Sadu. Sadu finally names her Nana. They all return to the city and meet with the others. After that, Mia asks Sadu to take her to the elf village. After everything is ready, Sadu and company head for the elf village. They travel a very long way. Tired, they rest in the hills. It turns out Mia cannot eat meat. Thus Lisa makes another dish for her. Their journey goes on. At the next rest, Mia shows her playing music skill with leaves by blowing them. Sadu and other give a try but they cannot make it. After that, Erisa asks Sadu to go around the rocks. There she points out the stone ruins which are similar to the shrine gate. That's when Sadu suddenly remembers something. In his past life, he knew a mysterious girl who told him about reincarnation. He also remembered that there was a shrine gate around his grandfather's house. Even so, his memory isn't very clear so he fails to recall the girl's face. They continue their journey. The kids are practicing playing music with leaves. Sadu finds Zen Grimoire in his inventory. He studies and learns magic spells. After studying carefully it turns out that magic is like a programming. Its logic and implementation are exactly the same. Sadu suspects that the inventor of magic was actually a programmer. The next day they arrive at the place where the rat men live. They are welcomed by the rat men. Mia goes to the tomb of the rat men who passed away while protecting her. She prays for them so their spirits will rest in peace. And off they continue their journey. On the way they meet a man named Dawson who beats the local man. Lisa says Dawson is one of the corrupt soldiers in the city yesterday. After Dawson leaves, Sadu gives the man a potion to heal him. He immediately recovers after drinking it. Erisa says Sadu cannot just use the potion because it is expensive and hard to get. Therefore, Sadu plans to learn how to make potion from Zen's grimoire. While other takes a rest, Sadu does research repeatedly to create potion. After a long trial finally he manages to make the potions. However, so that the quality does not decrease, the potion must be stored in a particular bottle. Thus Sadu plans to go to the nearest town, Kohanu, to find the bottle. 
The next morning they arrive at Kohanu, and they immediately go to the alchemy store. At the store, Sadu sees a man resembles to Dawson buying a lot of goods. Sadu enters the store and says he wants to buy a potion jar. However, the whole jars have been bought by the previous buyer. The shopkeeper suggests him to go to the pottery shop to find such a bottle. That night, Sadu walks around the forest which in his maps colored black. Every black area will automatically appear on the map when Sadu gets there. When he wanders around, he accidentally breaks through the magic wall. He checks on his map and finds himself entering the illusory forest. A moment later, a little kid named Ineni appears and attacks him because he has entered the forest without permission. Reluctantly, Sadu fights the kid because he is almost hurt. A second later, an old mage appears and apologizes for her student's reckless action. Then they go to the maid's house. It turns out they are making potion in great scale. They must send 300 vials of potion to Kohanu every year as a part of the pact. By giving them high-quality potion, the illusory forest will be protected. After that, Sadu returns to the city. The next day he goes to the pottery shop only to find the potion jars have been sold out. Instead, Sadu is offered to learn to make pottery. After that, he goes to the tavern. There he heard the mysterious men talking about the agreement with the mages in the illusory forest. If they can destroy the potion delivery, the agreement will be automatically cancelled. A moment later, Ini comes to the city with carriage full of 300 hundred potions. Unfortunately, he is chased by several men who want to attack him. Sadu and other help him but the men manage to destroy more than hundreds of bottle potions. Then, Sadu and others go to meet a nobleman in Kohanu. There they meet Dawson and a nobleman named Birkins. When listening to Birkins' voice, Sadu immediately recognized he was the man at the tavern before. It turns out they have set up a conspiracy to break the pact with the mages in the illusory forest. After an intense argument, Sadu is given chance until evening to make 300 potions. Sadu leaves the nobleman's residence and begins collecting the ingredients. Even so, when the ingredients have complete, he faces a deadlock. He doesn't have any bottle to store the potion. Sadu takes others to meet the owner of the pottery shop. The owner promises to help them even it sounds impossible. Moreover, he allows Sadu and other make potion vials that afternoon. The process of making the vials begins immediately. At the same time, Ineni is also desperately making the potions. After a full day making the vials, now all of them are left to be burned in the kiln. Ineni has also finished making the potions. At the end, they just have to wait for the burning to finish. Late afternoon, Sadu realizes there is problem. Dawson and some soldiers come. They don't allow the manufacture of extractor vials without permission. The owner says he is just teaching them how to make pottery. Dawson doesn't believe it and wants to destroy the kiln. Just then, Sadu touches the kiln and does something. Dawson and the soldiers destroy the kiln as well as what's in it. Sadu asks Inu to convey message to the mages at the forest. Using an owl, the message has sent. Meanwhile, it turns out Sadu has transferred 180 vials to his inventory. Thus, they are ready to give Dawson and others surprise. When everything is ready, they depart and hand over the 300 potions to the authorities. Sadu and others face against Dawson and Brinkies who are surprised by their success. The authorities have checked the potions and they are in a very good quality. Unfortunately Birkins doesn't want to stamp and sign delivered. It turns out Birkins is buying some time for the afternoon to end. Fortunately, the Earl Kohanu comes and gives the stamp. Birkins is surprised with his presence. It turns out the letter sent to the illusory forest has already reached them and they directly call the authorities. Not except defeat, Birkins tries to attack him, but his magic doesn't work with him. Instead, Birkins is about to be killed but Sadu stops him because there are many children inside the room. There, the conspiracy has finally been resolved. Either the mages of the illusory forest or the nobleman of Kohanu thanks for Sadu and his friend's effort. The next day they continue their journey to take Mia to the land of the elves. And the anime ends here.